put the, up. No, no, put the tripod on. No, it's like, relax, it's relax. like I can point it and move. Oh, okay, okay. Just say, like, my video is a little more, like, lively than just lively. the camera sitting down. A little, little better yeah. than the camera, huh? Yeah, yeah. What is up, Rad Potential YouTube? Welcome to today's video. So I'm Mr. Rad, and I'm here with Ryan. We're going to talk about turbo sizing. At the end of the video, we're going to come to a turbo size for the hybrid RX-8. So as you guys have seen on the channel, I've driven a multitude of different rotary cars, and he's tuned a multitude of different rotary cars. And ultimately, he knows a lot more about turbos that I haven't paid my tuition yet to learn. So uh, what's, I guess, a little bit, give us a little rundown of your experience um, in the rotary world, how much you've been, how long you've been tuning cars. and I would say professionally, I've been in this for maybe four years or okay. so. Um, the turbo stuff has always been a side passion, and okay. I've always been trying to evaluate stuff to it where it's easy to, to approach. Yeah. Um, turbos are a very complex but very simple thing. Yeah. And syncing, synchronizing an engine and a turbo to make them sing together yep. harmoniously uh, will make a very big difference. Yeah. You could see like some people just throw boost at a problem, and if you first tune the engine and then generate your boost and then mm -hmm. work on that afterwards, you're going to always benefit versus if you're just doing it all at once. So when it comes to turbo selection, there are quite a few things that will make sense and quite a few things that won't make any sense at all. Yep. Um, and really, it's always going to be based on application. Okay. So um, application basis being, for instance, if you're going drag racing yep. or circuit driving or canyon carving. Like behind us, we've got these incredible mountain ranges. Yeah. And based on altitude, that turbo is going to be consuming less dense air. Yep, yep. Right? And it's going to have to make more speed to generate a boost level. Yep. Which means the pressure ratio of the turbo is going to be higher. Yeah. And you'll see guys at Pikes Peak that are sizing up turbos that yep. are... Uh, let's say less than optimized, mm -hmm. and they're having to overspin the turbo 20%, 30%, 40% to make that same boost pressure or to make the power that they used to make at the sea level. Yeah, yep. And so for your application, it's kind of a cool thing. We get to jump in and say like, okay, well, first we have to figure out what is a budget that's reasonable for that build. Yep. I can't say, oh, let's take this $4,000 turbo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that might work great. However, if we can grab something that's like, the build cost me this, and I want this to be proportional with my build, yeah, yeah. And then I can kind of hone in on saying, okay, now based on this, here's new stuff to the technology that's exceeding mm -hmm. for its size. Yep. Here's stuff that's middle ground, and here's stuff that is like, you know, bargain basement, but it works. Yeah, right? for sure. And once we see kind of where the budget goes, then the rest of it makes sense. Yeah. And uh, I would love to have everyone to have like the top tier yeah. everything, right? <laughs> but we have to be real about what we can afford. For sure. And you know, you can bust your ass working on 10 cars to, to buy your turbo, and then yeah. it might not be exactly what you wanted, exactly. so why work so hard, right? Yeah. Maybe, by contrast, we get you something that is almost a swappable setup and say yeah. like A, B. Yeah, yeah. And you can have the same turbine housing and drop in a different compressor wheel, yeah. drop in something else that might work better. And you can personally feel what you like yeah, as a driver sure. because your driving is different than my driving. Yeah. We always have to think of it that way. Yeah, for sure. So like in the past, the turbos that I've really liked is like the 7670 Borg Warner, like how it schools almost instantly. In addition to just like the 8374 EFR, like it comes on basically as fast as a 7670 for the for how my foot would react to it on a street, right? Not a racetrack or anything, but I feel like there's a little bit more power potential there. So like those are both REW experiences that I've had with those two turbos. So what would be, you know, the hybrid's kind of a unique thing with its exhaust flow. And we'll probably start out with a stock RX-8 intake manifold, but ultimately end up with, I'd like to have an REW intake manifold on it at some point. So like a flange or an adapter or something like that, or you know, even it could be tubular, but the ultimate goal would be to upgrade the intake manifold because I think that's a restriction. So right. what would be like a good starting turbo to generate 8374-ish feel, but like on that on hybrid, that, you know? On the so, hybrid. So I love this yeah, part this of the video. This is going to be annoying. This is going to be great. Whoa! This is our so, state owner. <laughs> we're at... Whoa! Whoa! Ooh, a great fireball. Yeah. Hopefully you guys get to see that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> 
fantastic fireball. It's probably eight foot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, ideally, on your car, mm-hmm. the person who has the most experience would be Brett Harper. Okay. And he has identified somewhere around a G thirty six hundred. Okay. I'm sorry, G thirty six sixty. Yeah. I personally would say something a little bit up from that was a G thirty six. I'm sorry, G thirty seven. 70. Okay, so that's a Garrett Turbo. It's a Garrett Turbo, yep. and that's going to be, I believe, right around a 58 millimeter compressor wheel. Okay. Um, it ends up being about a 58, 58, yeah. if you had to think of okay. it in a uh, precision sizing yeah. or whatever. Okay. That might be a so little ultimately more. ultimately, re- pretty small. Ultimately, pretty say. small. Yeah. So it's going to be very close to 7670. Okay, like size wise. Size wise, will okay. be very close to 7670 for what I think is your flow. Yeah. Now, because you have the additional ports of the hybrid, yep. you would think, oh, wow, I've got all this more exhaust flow. Yeah. You really don't. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> the REW will still somehow magically trump it when it comes to yeah. overall flow. And it's because now you're dividing that flow within more ports yeah. versus all of it into two large ports. Sure. So um, it ends up being a kind of a different thing because it's a less focused energy. Yeah. And so when we dis- when we deciphered being it that way, we can relate it to, okay, well, the engine will now act closer to a reciprocating engine of the same size. Yeah, yeah versus like rotaries that consume crazy amounts yeah, more airflow for, sure. for what they are. So you can downsize the turbo for that application yep. specifically. Yeah. Um, it's going to be trial and error because yeah. that engine is a trial and error. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But from what Brett has seen, what I have seen, and yep. a few others that have done hybrids, it's going to be that thing where this might work for you. Yeah. And then you might say, oh, well, actually I want to do circuit driving or yeah, yeah. I want elevation or I want this. And because of those, we change the sizing accordingly. Yeah, yeah. And that's why I was saying if we go with, let's say a G30, mm-hmm. well, you can have a G30 660 yeah. or a G30 770 yeah. or a G3900 and all yeah. drop into the same turbine. Yeah, so it's interchangeable as far as upgradability and, yeah. and go from there. Yeah. Because, like, ultimately, my goal for it is, like, I understand the limitations of a Renesis block, which is, you know, I'm going to break a front iron at probably 350 horsepower, 300 horsepower. If oh I God. tear it up, they, <laughs> they, like, crack. And, and it's probably more detonation stuff that's cracking that and, and, and tuning and stuff in addition. But, you know, those blocks aren't that strong comparatively to an REW block as far as the doweling and, and getting the actual engine strength there. Right. So understanding that limitation, you know, that, that 350 horsepower is probably the max. You know, ultimately, like I, I kind of know a little bit more about turbos than I let on the in beginning of the video. But like I, I know that that turbo is probably about experience. where I would. Yeah, you have experience. What I would sense, say you know. is, what's great about what I just gave with sizing is to compare it to Borg Warner. Yeah, they just came out with a 258 SXR. Okay, the 258 SXR is essentially a 7670 that has crazy, crazy top end. Yeah, so. You're gaining all the response of the 7670. It's a journal bearing, yeah. so you have none of the drawback yeah. of, like, let's say we have harmonics that knock out the bearing. Yeah, yeah. Not really a rotary issue, but some engines do have this problem. Yeah. Um, and you want it to be rebuildable. Yeah. Well, you just got a $1,200 turbo that does what a $3,000 turbo could do. For sure. And now has more power band than a 7670. Yeah. So you're getting almost like an 8370 kind of power band yeah, yeah. out of a small frame. Yeah, for sure. And that costs you $1,200. It's landing exactly what you need for response yep. and power band. Yep. And it gets the drive motor that you want on a budget that's reasonable for the car. Yeah, for sure. Because it's still an RX-8, guys. Like, we can't put a $4,000 turbo on an it's, RX-8. It's not reasonable. I thought, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's not. It's not the best thing. So, yeah, I think that pretty much sums it up. I think yep. that nails for, you know, as you can see Mazda guys are tearing the booth down around us, which is fun. We kind of yeah. just were like, we need a quietish spot that's far away from the... We are sitting at the Mazda booth very professional. Yeah, yeah, we yeah. asked nicely. <laughs> we did. Um, I definitely appreciate them for coming out and putting this on. But ultimately, you know, I've been messaging him a little bit and asking him these questions. And I feel like it's valuable information for you guys. You know, like, um, he's tuned cars and you can check out his page, uh, Right Brain Design Without the Eye. Yep. And, uh, and, and have him tune your car and do it remotely. And I've got buddies who've had him 
to their car. My buddy Brandon has a really sweet FD in Nashville, and the thing rips, and he always compliments Ryan on, on getting stuff done and getting the, the tune sorted and sending logs back and switching to 85, and, you know, I've, I've known him for four or five years, so I've seen his car get blown up multiple times, you know, and uh, it's just... Wasn't me. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, it's just fun to see somebody work with, with your friend, and, and it, you know, the internet's full of every... For one nice comment, there's 20 bad comments, and... Yeah. And that's what you're going to see. So, you know, to have good experience, and I'm happy to have met him and to met Ryan and been out here and, and learn a little bit. But I think this is good information for you because everyone goes into an RX-8 expecting it to be like an FD, and it's not at all like an FD. It is not at all like And you have to treat it like completely FD. differently. But that doesn't mean that they're not good cars and they you can't have fun. You the chassis is amazing. Yeah. The ergonomics are incredible. Yeah. Like, you're getting all the best aspects of any car in general, yeah. and then you're getting a rotary with it. Yeah. So I like the REW soft stuff myself, yeah, yeah. but that chassis is incredible. Yeah, so. and the hybrid stuff, like, we're going to keep pushing it and putting it in that in my Nordic green car. And ultimately, I think that's a good balance of, like, keeping the car and the build relatable to what you guys could do, which is, you know, you have a four or $5,000 RX-8, like, mine's pretty beat. You can build a hybrid engine that's going to be a little bit more efficient for boost than just a regular Renesis and have a little bit more power potential than just a stock Renesis. So, and more more so heat management, right? EGT no, management, got, which some something we didn't touch on, but that's a very detailed topic we can go into in another video we, for we sure. We can definitely when talk we about definitely start tuning the car, and specifics so. of the RX-8 motor and how thermally expansion they work yeah, with yeah. those seals. They need to have larger gaps than what you're yeah. used to. Yep. So if you're used to REW gapping when it comes to side seal clearancing yeah, yeah. or yep. apex seal clearancing, they need to be larger on the Renaissance. Yep. Yeah. It just expands more. There's, there's, there's reasons behind that. Yeah. So we'll dive into that at a later time. But hopefully you guys learned something. I know I did, and I really appreciate your time and Mazda's time for letting us thank you, Mazda. the couch of the day. <laughs> <laughs> so, Ryan, hey. thank you, sir. And uh, go check out Right Brain Design Tuning, um, and he can get you sorted out. And I'm excited to push this hybrid through. Yeah, man. It's gonna be awesome. great. Thank you. See you. Rock on. All right, guys. There's seven stock. Get in the video. <laughs> Peace.